When the official Nerf robots are pretty lacking, you're forced to make your own, which is what this video is all about. I wanna see if we can actually build a faster, stronger, and much more powerful Nerf robot. And the process was an absolute blast. All right. <laughs> but before we get into the live testing, um, let's talk about what this thing even is. The system is comprised of four main components, a four-wheel drive robot chassis, a flatbed trailer, the all-important rocket launcher, and a mechanized base that acts as the elevation source for the rocket launcher itself, so I can raise it up and go for higher targets or longer ranges. The robot chassis is actually the same one that I covered the design and absolute torture testing of previously, except I gave it a new paint job and and I changed the electronics, mostly because I needed more servo channels. But with this configuration, I actually have to manually control the differential steering, which means I'm not using a mixer. So to go left or right, I have to give a different input into the sticks on each side of the controller. I can make a long slow turn by only going forward on one side, or I can make it spin completely on its own axis by putting the two sticks in different directions. And immediately after connecting the new electronics, Things weren't looking so good, and that's because I made a rookie mistake. You see, I'm running two ESCs and I forgot to remove the power from one of them, which meant my receiver was being powered by two ESCs, which it did not like, and it went into failure mode. Uh, but after removing the red wire on just one of the controllers, I was back on my way to a perfectly functioning chassis. Then of course I needed to build a trailer which is incredibly simple. Uh, it's just a simple flatbed design that's made of some plasma cut steel and formed a shape. The wheels are rigidly attached which means there's no suspension at all. But I did get cute with the trailer coupler and I used kind of a ball joint that acts a lot like a typical trailer coupler and allows a lot of motion and flexibility to give me maneuverability in all terrains. And it makes everything more fun when you attach this pivot point at the exact center of rotation of a skid steering chassis. The trailer seemed to work great and my dog absolutely loved it, but the one thing I think would make it a lot better is the suspension. It would definitely make the ride smoother and protect anything that was stored on the trailer. And now for the best part, the Nerf rocket launcher. This design is based off of a t-shirt launcher I had previously, and with enough adapters, fittings, and some hacked together pipes, I was able to modify it to launch four Nerf rockets. And after getting it together, I tested it what I thought was a measly 35 to 40 PSI. But apparently 35 PSI launches much harder than I expected. Regardless, that is more than good enough for paint and I'm ready for some more testing. You may notice that the darts don't even go remotely close to straight, and that's because they've angled the fins to induce spin, which is entirely unnecessary. I also wanted to understand the pressure impact on projectile velocity, so I broke out a chronograph. And I tested at 20, 40, and 60 PSI, but I was really surprised to find that the velocity didn't vary nearly as much as I expected. At 20 PSI, it was still like 62 or 64 feet per second, Whereas at 60 PSI, it only got up to 73 feet per second. I really expected a much broader swing in velocity. But realistically speaking, all of those are good enough. Because a typical Nerf rocket launcher is more like 50 feet per second. 
Lastly, we need mechanisms to control the elevation of the launcher, and I also need a servo to fire it. I'm using a simple slider crank mechanism to actually elevate the launcher because I was already designing one for another really weird project. So if you're interested in that one, make sure to subscribe. It is coming up very soon. Um, but back to the point, I'm using a slider crank, which allows me to very cost effectively elevate the launcher. But with the cheapness of the mechanism comes some trades. The first one is that I control stroke length by the length of the crank arm. And a longer crank arm equates to more required torque for the same actuation force. Since I'm using a servo, my peak torque is a fixed value that's not as high as I would like. So I have to kind of game the system to make sure that my total travel and torque are balanced. And that's why you see two holes on this link right here. It gives me some tuning after I've already made the parts. The actuation force curve is non-linear. It roughly follows that of a sine wave. So I have more mechanical advantage in some regions and less mechanical advantage in other regions where I have more stroke length, which means I can kind of game the system to give myself more mechanical advantage in the region where the load is highest and then use the higher stroke length region when the load starts to reduce because the center of gravity is over less of a moment arm. Whereas if I start with the peak load at the region with the smallest mechanical advantage, I actually don't get any movement at all, but when we reposition, you can see I do get some actuation giving me what I want. In the long run, I also added a spring to some of the features that already existed for this just to give myself more margin. I also attached a servo to the launcher so that when I flick this switch, the magic happens. And the last thing to do is bolt it all to the trailer and see if it all works because I'm not gonna lie, these 3D printed parts feel quite a bit wimpier than I was expecting, especially in the nearly 100 degree weather outside. But it was actually a lot more robust than I expected. And even when I was driving like an idiot, I never actually broke it. The elevation adjustment actually was great for handling either higher targets or longer ranges, which means we are finally ready for testing on a live test dummy. And I was super pleased with this thing's ability to attack someone when they're not looking. Just kidding, it actually worked really well though. I was pretty happy with how everything actuated, how it moved, how it could carry itself around. Uh, the, the biggest drawback I'd say is that this actuator was a total compromise. I would be far better off using an actual linear actuator that doesn't constantly load a servo, that has linear movement and is much better at applying a high force throughout a linear range of travel. I did finally break a part and that's I stripped out the internal wheel hexes on these very large wheels. They really should have been 17 millimeter, but they were the standard 12 millimeter for one tenth scale stuff. And that means I'm switching back to my sand pedals because they have a clean and deeper hex bore. And since they're a little over an inch smaller in diameter, they'll actually be a lot easier on the drive line and something more custom to one tenth scale hardware. And now for the real reason behind this project, I needed a flatbed trailer for some of my other RC cars, and this just made it much more exciting, and we had a blast with the Nerf launcher in general. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. I do have some awesome projects coming out. Like I mentioned, this actuator is made for something totally different and really weird. So please stay tuned. Let me know what you think about everything, and I will talk to you soon.